If you happen to be watching this video before December 18, 2021, then you'll want to join my live design session where I'll be creating this Benchy model from scratch while demonstrating some very powerful design techniques in Fusion 360. You can join me live and ask questions along the way. See the link below for details and to register. Hey guys, Vladimir here. I've been meaning for a while now to do a series of tutorials on the new mesh workspace in Fusion 360. So if you haven't checked it out yet, or if you weren't aware, several months ago, Fusion released a big update and really introduced a lot of new tools, giving us uh, the ability to do a lot more with bringing in an STL file and editing it. So we'll jump into it today. And I'll, this actually would take, or it would be one long video, uh, to explain everything. So I'll break these down into um, different videos that I'll release in the future. For today, I just want to kind of just show you like a, a really quick example of what you can do. So let's bring in a model and that way I can kind of show you by example here. Since I'm in the holiday spirit, we're going to go ahead and bring in this Christmas tree by iDig3D. Really cool model, especially if you print it in like a translucent PLA or PETG. Uh, it really shines and so what I want to be able to do is print this and if you recall from my last video I showed uh, these little LED modules that you can buy um, basically came as a part of this uh, orb I don't know they're called LED orbs and so you can unscrew the little module and I want to actually put that inside this tree here and so I'll show you a couple of the tools and the new approach we're gonna take is which is quite different from what we used to do Okay, so I've already downloaded it and then uh, let's go back to Fusion. We can either go to Insert Mesh right here on the Solid Workspace or we can jump directly into the Mesh Workspace. Now, you see the Mesh Workspace here. It's now its own workspace here in Fusion 360. Before, it was only a feature preview, so you had to go into your settings and, and allow the preview. Now, it's permanently here. So we'll click on that and then you'll see you have a whole new set of tools and icons up top. Uh, okay, right away, we'll go to insert down to insert mesh and we'll grab our file, open, and it brings it in. So take a look at the dialog box here. Don't ignore it because there's some important, important information that will save you some uh, headaches later. Uh, so first of all, since STL files are unitless, you can go ahead and set the units here. I'm going to choose millimeter and this prevents, you know, you probably may have dealt with this in the past where you bring something in and it's just really like tiny little thing um, because it might have been modeled in inches and you brought it in and the software assumed there was millimeters and then you have to convert it over. Um, now you can just tell it what units it is. And then here we have two options to center or move to ground. If I turn on my origin here, you see that if I click on center, it's going to position the model right on the center there of the origin. In my case here, I'm going to go to move to ground because since I want to put a hole in the bottom here, it's going to um, be a lot better for me to take advantage of that ground plane. So, all right, I'll click OK. And the first thing I want to do here is actually scale it because it's too big. And the way you can tell that size is if you uh, right click on the model and you can go down to uh, properties. And if you click on bounding box to expand it, you'll see the length, width, and height. So it's 300 millimeters. I want to bring it down uh, to half that size, so 150. So I'll click OK, and what I'm going to do is go to Modify and go down to Scale Mesh. And OK, uh, an important feature here that I want to show you. So if I just select the model and then uh, click on scale factor here, let's say 0 0.5 to go down 50%. If I click OK, you notice how it throws the model up here. Um, so let me just do that for a second. And then now, you know, I can't really select the bottom of this plane to make a hole. I would have preferred it to stay on this bottom plane here. So to do that, let me undo and then go back again to modify scale mesh. So instead, what you want to do is you want to click on point here and select your center origin point and then go to select uh, for your entities and click on there. And now when I enter 0 0.50, it keeps it on that plane. So it's going to make my job a lot easier in a minute. All right. So now that I have that, let me turn off the origin. What I want to do is um, sketch here on the bottom. And this is where things are just flipped around okay this part is really important so before your only option would be to convert this model into a solid and so there was this whole workflow we had to go through uh, we had to stop like capture design history and then we had to go convert to b-wrap 
and then this would convert and if it was a, a very um, high poly design meaning like I had a lot of facets here it's, sometimes it just wouldn't work it would just fail right and then you would have to um, you know maybe try to reduce it in quality and then try to convert it and it was just a pain we don't have to worry about that anymore because th there's something really cool here and what you actually do is the opposite right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the solid workspace create a solid model convert that to a mesh and then we're going to take advantage of the new mesh tools to uh, amend or make changes to this design so let me show you what i'm talking about i'm going to go back to solid and i'm going to create a sketch and i'm going to select this bottom plane i'll grab a circle so I'll create a circle down to center diameter circle snap it right to the center and again this is why i wanted this on the plane right on center I'm gonna make this circle 25.5 millimeters, enter, finish that sketch, and now I'm gonna select that circle and extrude it up. Let me untoggle uh, the visibility of the tree here so we can see it. I'm gonna go up three millimeters and I'm gonna click OK. So I wanna take basically this little disc here and cut out the shape out of this tree so I'm working with uh, two different types of bodies here right I have the the mesh and my solid body so instead of converting the tree to a solid like I said we're gonna go about it a completely opposite way we're gonna take this solid and convert it to a mesh so we're gonna go um, back to the mesh workspace and there's a new option here called tessellate so I'll click on tessellate choose the model I'm just simply going to click OK here. I'm not going to worry about any of these settings. And you can see now that our little puck there has been converted into a mesh. Now that we have these two mesh bodies here, we can go to Modify. We'll go to Combine. Again, this is a sort of works the exact same way as your Combine feature if you're in the solid workspace, right? You have your Boolean operations here. Target body is going to be the tree. The tool body is going to be our uh, little disc here that we made. And the operation is going to be a cut. I'll click OK. And give Fusion a few seconds here to think. You'll see a little status bar here. And there we go. And now I have a 3 millimeter deep, 25.5 millimeter diameter, a uh, little hole cut out the bottom. And that's it, that's all I needed here. So now I can send this to the 3D printer and I'll show you one important change that was made to that. So normally when I 3D print an object, I like to simply go to tools, make 3D print and I'll select this. And usually I'll send it straight to my printer by checking this box um, or sometimes I'll uncheck it and save it as an STL file. But if you do it the other way by going to uh, um, right clicking here and, and you save it as an STL, you may be looking for save as STL and that will no longer exist because now it's called save as mesh, right? Again, because we have our three uh, files that uh, we can save it as. So you want to choose save as mesh and you know select your model here and it's going to uh, default to STL, but you have the option of choosing 3MF or OBJ there. So we're going to keep it as SDL and then I'll go ahead and uh, keep this uh, button checked here to send it right to my printer. If you uncheck it, it'll just save it to a folder as an STL file. Fusion will just uh, open up the app and throw it right in there. And there it is. And if I um, orbit to the bottom here, you'll see there I've got that three millimeter uh, opening there. So, okay, the way I'm going to print this is I'm going to print it in vase mode. Um, and there's a trick here. Um, a little off topic, but I'll show you this uh, just in case. So to print this in vase mode, you'll go to print settings here. And for layers and perimeters, you just check the, sp fi the spiral vase option here. Um, but let's, I want to show you what happens if I just slice this and we look at the preview. Uh, it does this, right? That's not going to help me with just one layer of filament on the bottom there. So what I'm going to do, again, I want to insert that little uh, LED. So in order to make this functional, allowing me to insert the little LED module, what I'm going to do is go to print settings and I'm going to change the number of solid layers. Now I'm going to print this at 0.2 millimeters and it's three millimeters um, that I need this um, to be. So I'm going to go with 15 layers, right? So uh, 15 layers there and then go back to platter. 
and then I'm going to re-slice this. Now watch how, what happens. It gives me you know, three millimeters. So five uh, layers per millimeter. That's why I get 15. And now I have this solid base here where I can go ahead and pop in a little LED module. So that's kind of a little trick I wanted to show you there in case you want to do a similar thing. Okay, and then you just export your G code to your printer. All right, if you have any questions on the approach I took today, leave it in the comments. Or if there is anything um, specific in the mesh workspace that you'd like me to cover, uh, let me know by leaving them in the comments as well. All right, two things for you. One, if you haven't checked out my Fusion 360 sketch constraint cheat sheet, I've got the link for that below where you can grab it. And two, again, if you're watching this before December 18th, 2021, I've got a live design session I'm hosting this Saturday. So click on the link below for details and to register. All right, guys, I will see you in a few.